Mark Tompkins does a wonderful job for us. Long time, though, chat. We've got a lot to do here on his team. And he joins us. Mark, welcome. First off, they have some injuries. They don't have a ton of depth at all positions because of their payroll. They might lose two guys for an extended period. It's a big blow. Let's go there first. Go ahead. It, it, is, it is, Chris. And, you know, don't forget, they're already playing without Wander Franco. They're probably most dynamic offensive player. They're two top home run hitters, Brandon Lau and Mike Zanino, uh, who Mike Zanino might be out for a long period of time. They're trying to sort that out right now. They're missing two guys out of the rotation, Patino and Rasmussen. They're missing their two best uh, late inning relievers, Kittredge and Fire Eyes. And so they have been beat up. Uh, they have been shorthanded. And this is obviously a big blow. Manny Margot, not just a really good outfielder for the Rays uh, and a really good hitter, but also a very big leader in that clubhouse, especially among the young Spanish speaking players. So a very big loss. And, you know, for Cash to say it was going to be a significant amount of time last night makes you wonder if it's an ACL, if that's the initial thought. We've got to keep an eye on that. And they're also only 36 and 31. Now they're in fourth place. The Red Sox have overtaken them temporarily. And they haven't played well here for a period of time. They don't score a ton of runs, as you know. Even the Orioles are beating them. This is not a good stretch for Tampa. And they can forget about the division. And they're in huge trouble here. Let me get your thoughts on that. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you mentioned the Orioles. We looked this up. They have lost back-to-back -back series to the Orioles. They had not lost back-to-back -back series to the Orioles since 2017. And that was last year. They beat them 18 out of 19 games. So you could use that as kind of a marker. But, yeah, it's been a tough year. I mean, it, it, nothing has come easy. The injuries have obviously hurt. Depth, loss of depth has shown up a little bit. But maybe most mystifying, Chris, and I know you watch a lot of games, that they have been poor defensively. Very tough. 45 unearned runs. And the Yankees have only given up eight. I mean, my goodness, 45 unearned runs, Mark? That is hard to believe. Fill me in on that stat. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, mo most in the majors, almost almost their whole total of last year. I think they were 58 for all of last year. So very, un I mean, the word's been uncharacteristic, but honestly, it's becoming characteristic the way they've played. It's been all over the field. I mean, I talked to Kiermaier about it the other day. You know, he's, he's kind of their minister of defense with three gold gloves. And he suggested maybe like a, a focus thing and, and kind of in that pre-pitch mode where guys need to be thinking what's going to happen and anticipate where the ball might go. That was just his thought. Cash is adamant. It's not a lack of work. We see him out there all the time. They always take early, game, early infield, early ground balls, things like that. Not preparation. It shouldn't be talent. They've got good players. But that has really hurt them because this is a team built on pitching a defense. And to not have that safety net, uh, and allow that many unearned runs. It's obviously caused all kinds of problems. There's a trickle down too. Guys are trying too hard to make up for that, trying to score runs. You've seen a lot of mistakes on the bases. They've got the most outs on the bases and the most guys caught stealing in the majors as well. Wow, unbelievable. And, you know, listen, they are a, uh, you know, they take chances and usually they're right. You know, they traded Snell. Nobody saw that coming. Meadows, nobody saw that coming. You know, they're not winning the division. Right now they're going to probably play for, a, you know, a best of three series. They're only five over. Uh, you know, they sometimes, you know, they, hey, the heck with it. They go for the next year scenario if they wanted to. What is going to be their philosophy in the next month as far as adding or subtracting for the last half of the season? I think that's a very interesting question. How do you answer that? Let me hear. And, and, and I, I think it's changed over the last 24 hours, too. I actually talked to Eric Neander, the president of baseball operations, about this at Yankee Stadium the other day. And, he said at that point, you know, that yes, he acknowledged that, you know, without saying the, the quiet part out loud, that the Yankees probably are going to win the division. And, you know, they're looking at the playoff situation that the new format this year, as you alluded to, the top two teams get buys, the other four, the three wild cards, and the lowest division winner play best of three, all at one team site. So there's a benefit to be that top wild card, a significant uh, advantage, I think, of playing all three games at home. So, yeah, they've got to kind of assess where they are in that. And you're right. They always kind of split the difference. They're always looking to get better, but also looking to the future. Some years that means trading. Some years that means adding. Some years that means doing both. My, my guess is that ends up being what they do this year. We'll see them make a handful of moves. They'll make some moves really aimed more at the future. And where depending where they are, if they're still in the wild card race, I think they'll try to do something to make sure they get in the tournament, thinking if they get everybody back and healthy by the end of the year, they can probably match up pretty well. Anything with Franco I need to know about? I know he played last night, got in a bat against Sale. What's up with his status? He's the most important cog in this team. Playoffs this year or not, what can you tell me about him in his first year of this big contract? Yeah, you know, it's been obviously a disappointing year. The leg issues kind of surfaced way back in April when they played in Chicago mid-April and kind of dragged on through the end of April and all of May. Uh, they finally made the decision at the end of May, like enough was enough, uh, put him on the injured list shut him down for a couple weeks. It's dragged on a little bit as well, but he is playing. He did play last night, Florida Complex League, two for three. Uh, the hit was not against, neither hit against Sale. We will point out he did strike out against Sale. Uh, and then he's going to go on to play in Durham. They're actually in Jacksonville with the AAA Durham team the next couple of days. 
It sounds like if that goes well, he should be back this weekend. I mean, it probably wouldn't. They have a day game Saturday, so he probably wouldn't play Friday night and Saturday day. So I would assume he just comes back for the Saturday or the Sunday day game. They're off on Monday and get him back in there. And then, you know, then Taylor Walls goes back to being utility infielder, not the everyday shortstop. His you know batting average is in the 160, 170 range. Uh, allows them to rotate he, Bruhan, and Paredes a little bit more and, and maybe get those guys in better matchups because they're not doing much. They had four or five guys in the lineup the other night all hitting under 200. That's tough to do, especially when you're playing the New York Yankees. Oh, impossible. Last thing, Mark, and I know the commissioner made mention of Oakland and Tampa with the clock winding down as far as that new stadium is concerned. He said that last week at the quarterly meetings. Uh, I, you know, who knows? They're not going to go to Montreal half the season, so that's out. I know the lease isn't up until 27. Any movement at all in the business community to help the franchise out? What's the latest on that? I'm always interested. Let me hear. Yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been oddly quiet in the five months since MLB killed the Montreal split season plan, Chris. But I, I think what we're now starting to see, and it's kind of heating up, is talks back with St. Petersburg. I know a lot of people are kind of up in arms over that and saying, why would they want to build again in St. Pete? It's failed. Attendance, location seem to be related. But I think that's where they're going to get the best offer. The new mayor of St. Pete, Ken Welch, has been very open and aggressive in talking to the Rays. Uh, he's planning. There's a redevelopment plan for the Tropicana Field site. He's promised an announcement by June 30th. I'm not sure what that's going to be. I don't think that's going to be a new stadium deal. But I think the idea of continuing talks with the Rays, he has the ability to make them a really good offer uh, financially based on the giant amount of money in the Pinellas County Hotel bed tax, which I think you've contributed to a number of times over the years. And uh, they, they have the ability to probably make a much better offer. It's been very quiet on the Tampa side. I know that makes more sense. We've talked before building a stadium over either in downtown Tampa or the Ybor City area would seem to make sense geographically. But unless this is a slow play over there, it's been very quiet on the Tampa side. I think St. Pete's going to be more aggressive and make them a better offer. And then it'll come down to what do the Rays want to do? What does MLB want the Rays to do? Excellent job. Mark, you do the best job we can find here on Tampa. Great to have you with us. We'll keep in touch. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Anytime, Chris.